Okay, I'm at Timmy's. Even the school buses come to Timmy's. They bring the kids here now? I never got to go to Timmy's on the school bus. My school bus driver didn't stop at Timmy's for me. Kids these days, they get everything. All right, anyways, uh, trailer's empty. I'm gonna show you so you believe me. I know if I don't show you it, you don't believe me. You think I'm lying all the time. There it is. Empty truck. Empty trailer, not an empty truck. I got stuff in the truck and I'm gonna be in the truck right away. Going home, I'm excited. I have my Timmy's. So, I gotta bring this trailer back to the yard. Get them to take a look at that air leveling valve uh, that I fixed yesterday. Just let them know that uh, there was an issue with it there, so they'll take it in and look at it. And, uh, and I, then I go home for the weekend. So the longer I sit here, the less time I have to play with my kid at home. Off we go. So this is the Tim Hortons in Bolgeser. Pull ourselves out of here. Go back down Highway 12 towards Highway 1, Trans-Canada Corridor. We'll take that west towards Winnipeg. We'll go around Winnipeg. I'm going to fuel up at Deacon's Corner on the, on the east side of town. That way I'll have full fuel tanks for next week whenever I start. It doesn't really matter which direction they send me. I'll be ready to go. Maybe I'll go to Kenora again. I don't know. Maybe I'll go somewhere else. Oh, these tracks here are so bad. Good thing they put those orange signs. Ouch! 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 Good thing they put those orange little triangles or diamonds there, right? So you know. Just so you know, your vehicle's about to lose a tire. Just heads up. We'd fix it, but we thought it was cheaper just to put up an orange diamond, just to warn you. It's gonna be a good day. Can you feel it? Suicide corner. You guys remember we used to come through here almost every day when I was doing uh, more local stuff? This is uh, Trans Canada, the perimeter around the south side of Winnipeg. We're facing westbound. We're gonna turn to the right here to go south down Highway 59. This is uh, a common intersection that I like to highlight. Because whoever, uh, whoever designed it, Whoever designed it did not have public safety in mind. Okay, look at this. See, now we want to go that way, right? So instead of making a loop to go around so that I don't have to cross over traffic, we have this highway coming here, which comes around a bend from there. So I can't see traffic very far up the road there. And here this way, 
it's right over a bridge. So I can't see traffic coming in here at 60 mile an hour, 100 kilometers an hour until it's about a quarter mile away. And I've got a 75 foot unit to get across here while also making sure that there's no traffic coming from there. You see now there's traffic coming over there about a quarter and a half mile away. And they're also traveling at about 55, 60 mile an hour, 90 to 100 kilometers an hour. So now this way is clear, right? This way is not clear and I can't block this road. So I need to wait till both directions are clear before I can cross. And remember, I could think that this direction is clear, but oh, there's cars, now it's not clear. The second you see the top of their roof come over that bridge, it's too late. If, if you're already rolling, they, they have, they'll have no option other than to hit the brakes and wait for you to cross. And you just gotta hope they don't hit you. They were clear again. Okay, we're good. We're good now. See, oh, we see the roof coming there already. Get across here, get into our lane, and just enough time. So I don't like going through that intersection. I wanted to show it again today just to highlight it. Because, you know, I always hope that maybe my videos can make some real change one day. Maybe the right person in infrastructure and government will see my video. Maybe they'll get a few emails from people who are also concerned about that same intersection. Who live out here as well and have to go through that intersection every day. And you know, the question that I have is why? Why was it built that way in the first place? With public safety last in mind. And why hasn't it been corrected to save lives? Obviously the answer they're gonna come back with is money, right? They owe, that's the, that's the catch-all. Why hasn't this been done? Their answer will always be money. Well, since the pandemic hit, I don't think they can use that excuse anymore. <laughs> we know you have access to money. We know you, you know where the printers are. So much money is wasted in bureaucracy and nonsense, and it's sent around the world when we desperately need it here. I know they, that they could. If they wanted to, they would. That only leaves the logical conclusion is that they don't care, they don't want to fix it. Which makes me sad. So I'll keep highlighting that intersection, and one day I hope that I can make a video when that issue is fixed properly. Not just put a band-aid on it, not fixed with a roundabout. <laughs> All they have to do is just do a loop, right? Go under the bridge and loop around into traffic, merge into traffic that way, that's it. But uh, you know, I'm just a, a lowly peasant driving his truck, complaining on the internet, But one day, maybe at the end of my life, I can say, hey, you know what? I made a difference. I made things better. I pressured people to fix dangerous situations, you know? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm just yelling at the wind, yelling at my windshield. Maybe no one's listening. I know they don't care, but maybe I don't have the ability to make them care, I don't know. But if you don't talk about it, it definitely won't get fixed. They will not fix a problem unless they are pressured to do so, right? That's the way it works. That's the way it works. If no one's complaining about it, they just assume everybody must be okay with it. No, I'm not okay with that intersection. I'm not okay with it. Approaching Poor design. Two kilometers. 
I don't know how many people have died at that intersection already, but uh, one is one too many. And I don't know how many deaths it's gonna take before something happens, you know? Usually that's what it takes. Usually several people have to die before they do anything. It's sad. It's summertime again. Oh. It's good. It's good for you to sweat out all those toxins, right? It's just, they say sweating's good for you. I'm a professional at it. Man, as soon as the, what's the temperature outside? What's the temperature outside? It is, oh, that can't be right. That can't be right. Let's refresh that. Oh, one second, people. One second. Prepare to laugh. Come on. Come on, 5G network. Come on. It doesn't even want to tell me. Come on. Why won't it load? What's going on? I got 5G. Well, okay, so that doesn't want to tell me. I'll just Google it then. What's the temperature outside? 25 degrees Celsius. What is 25 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 77 degrees. Oh, and I'm melting. Wow. You see this? Oh, okay, so I'm back at my shop. And uh, this is the part of the week where I decide what I'm going to take home for the weekend. So obviously I take home all my valuables, cameras, uh, GPS, anything that's worth a lot of money. I don't leave in the truck or in the shop. I always keep it right right close to me at home uh, and lock it up there. So I'll probably take all my dirty laundry, obviously. My towels didn't get too dirty this week, thankfully. It was a good week. Didn't see a lot of rain or anything, so I'll leave them on the floor. They'll be good for another week. My bedding as well will be good uh, because I was able to shower during the week and keep my blankets and sheet clean. Usually I'll take them home every weekend. The odd weekend like this one, I'll leave them in there for an extra, for an extra day. Or pardon me, for an extra week. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't, don't act like you wouldn't do the same thing. Okay, so I'll take my dirty laundry home, uh, computer, cameras, got to get my stuff out of my cooler in here, put it into my fridge in my shop so that I can turn this cooler off and leave it open, clean it out, so it's ready to go on Monday, my drone home, okay, and then uh, and that's that, and then we're uh, going to go to my mom and dad's for supper tonight, I believe. That's a wrap on another week. I don't know what this was. You did good, Blue. Monday will come before you know it. We'll be back on the road. I have no load lined up for Monday. So what's gonna happen is I'll call in first thing on Monday morning. Well, probably not first thing, but Monday morning I'll call in. I'll give them a chance to get into the office, you know, boot up their computers, get settled in, start doing some digging. I'll call them probably around nine o'clock and be like, hey. What's up? You got any freight? Ah, yes. Too bad large car truck spot isn't in like uh, the bay over from me, eh? That'd be awesome. If Rob was like right next door to me, he'd get a truck wash every single weekend. I'd just leave him the keys. And here you go, Rob. Have fun. Whenever you got time, clean her all up. I'd be his most regular customer. Have any of you guys given him a call yet? I told you guys to go check out his website, right? Largecartruckspa.com. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Go check his website out. Have you, uh, if you guys are in the area, have you given him a call yet to arrange an appointment? He's a, he's a friend of mine, so I'm like, he's not telling me to do this now or anything. I'm just wondering. Have you, have you guys called him already?